Hey, a little uh, review of a topic you, you definitely saw in geometry. And if you take physics, you see this a lot. And this is the kind of thing I want you to work on on the asynchronous day a little bit. Um, although it's going to snow, so I want you to enjoy the snow as well. So we've seen uh, these reference triangles, and we've been labeling them Y, X, and R because they... Uh, they're parts of a circular function, right, with a radius of r. But, you know, if we got rid of uh, these axes, right, and just kind of look at this as just a regular old triangle without the axes. Now, let me, of course, put this side of the triangle back in. If we look at it, it doesn't make sense to call them x, y, and r because there's no coordinate system here. So in general, and what you did in geometry is, the radius was really just the hypotenuse because it was opposite the 90. The, the other side that's right next to theta is adjacent to it, so we called it the adjacent side. And the side across from it we called opposite. So sine, all year we've been calling it y over r, but in geometry you just called it opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. And again, if you took geometry, this should sound familiar or physics, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And with that, you could solve a lot of word problems provided, and again, the whole key is you have to have a right triangle. Uh, none of this works without a right triangle. If you don't have a right triangle, we use some other laws that we're going to talk about towards the end of the week. Um, okay, so let's give you a couple examples. This is in your Delta Math assignment for Wednesday. Um, this first one, I give you, a, again, a right triangle, and uh, they gave you the hypotenuse is 75. That's the longest side. Let's label that. And the side right next to the angle 40 is our unknown. We called it x. That's the adjacent side. So we need the function that connects adjacent and hypotenuse. That's cosine. So on my paper, I would write cosine of 40 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, of course, that's x over 75. And when you cross multiply, x just becomes 75 cosine of 40 degrees. Note it's in degrees, so you need to be in degree mode, really for this whole next chapter. And if I type that in, I get 57 uh, 0.45 and it continues and they said round to the nearest tenth so just be careful I guess I should really use these wavy signs right Delta math says nearest tenth for these so that would be 57.5 because the next digit is five or above so I move it up so this is what I'd be typing in this submit box on Delta math okay <clears throat> there it is nearest tenth is what they're looking for uh, let's look at another one like this. Again, I'm given a 90. They gave me uh, the angle is 65. If I label the sides, the unknown x is across from the angle and 4.8 is adjacent. Opposite and adjacent is the tangent function. Now, I'm going fairly quickly because this is a video. Please pause it or rewind if there's a problem. I'm writing tan of 65 is x over 4.8. If I cross multiply, x would be 4.8 tan of 65. Again, you got to be in degree mode. Otherwise, your calculator will not do this. You could, you could use Desmos. You could use your TI-84. Um, for number two here, you're going to get about 10.3. Uh, Again, I guess... Technically speaking, I've rounded this off, so I should put those wavy lines in there, but about 10.3. Now, those problems are, in effect, moving forward, meaning I had the angle, I got to find one of the sides. What if I have two sides? Could I work backward and, and get my angle as my unknown? And of course I can. Same thing, still label the sides. 29 here is opposite, 72 is hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse is the sine function. So I'd say sine of x degrees. There's my unknown. Notice it's not a theta. You know, there's nothing special about the Greek letters. Although we, we tend to use them a lot with angles, but they can also be um, regular letters, I guess. R letters. Uh, so there I got sine of x degrees is 29 over 72. Don't even bother getting the decimal. 
I got to get rid of sine. How do you undo a sine? Sine inverse on both sides. So in effect, when you're trying to get the angle, that's when you use the inverse trig functions. I'm going to type in sine inverse of 29 over 72. If I do that, um, opposite over hypotenuse, hang on real quick, I misplaced my calculator, sine inverse of 29 over 72, guys, that's 23.8 uh, degrees, I, to the nearest degree, and that's what they want for degrees, it would be 24 degrees, so x is equal to 24 degrees. I'm going to be honest, on delta math, I'm pretty sure you don't need the uh, to put the degree symbol in there. I think it's understood. And then finally, uh, number, what are we talking about here? Number four. Again, I just stole these from delta math. You'll probably have different problems. Again, I'm looking for an angle. This time, though, we gave you the hypotenuse, but we gave you the adjacent. So this is the adjacent is 3.3. The hypotenuse is 9.4. So I have tan of x degrees is uh, not tan. What? Who said that? <laughs> cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine would be 3.3 over 9.4. So x itself, when you're working backwards, would be cosine inverse. So bottom line is, if you're looking for an angle, you got to do the inverse trig function because inverse trig functions are angles. And if I invert that, I'm going to get X is approximately 69 degrees. That goes into delta math. Hopefully uh, that works. Remember, you have a little bit of an assignment. It should be review for you, though. Okay, and then we'll start with the law of signs on 